All right. Good evening, everyone. This is the May 10th meeting of the Board of Sewer Commissioners. I'd like to call the meeting to order. And first order of business, the roll call. Donna, are you here? Donna Bronk, present. Sandy Slavin. Malcolm White, present. Pete Dunlop, present. And Jim Gerberti, present. We have minutes from the April 19th and April 26th meeting. <coughs> April 19th, first. Mr. Chair, I have a question. I notice we record the date we opened. I don't see anything as to when we close the meeting. I'd like to have the close date included in the minutes from now on. Okay. Okay, sounds good. I make a motion to accept the April 19th, 2018 minutes as presented. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, I abstain. Donna's abstaining, yep. right? Four, one, zero. Okay, and now we have minutes from the April 26th meeting. Mr. Chair, I find that I, there is a need to correct something. Yep. The discussion yep. regarding Meineke, it says six EDUs. I believe they're being charged 18, eight EDUs, so that six must be changed to eight. That's what we have. Yes, they have eight bays. It's one EDU per bay. Okay, then that does need to be corrected. I make a motion we accept the April 26th meeting as amended. Second. In favor? Aye. 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 Abstain. Amend those meeting minutes. you have okay thank introduce, you very much. introduce yourself please um, my name is Anastasia Videnko I'm an engineer with GHD and I'm going to be presenting an update on the coastal resilience improvement projects funded by CDM okay run with it thank you so I'm going to start today by giving a quick project background and then talk about the coastal resilience mitigation mem uh, measures that have been designed for the Narrows, Heinz Field, and Cohasset Narrows stations. So I'll be talking about the concepts for the three stations and then we can talk about um, finer details of each station if you would like. So this is a project that is being funded by a grant through the Coastal Community Resilience Grant Program, um, which is administered by CCM. The overall cost of the project is a little over 130,000 and 75% of the project was funded through the grant with the 25% cost share. This is a, a project that builds on two other projects that were also funded by CCM. So in 2014, um, the town was awarded CCM funding to do a vulnerability assessment, which looked at all of the vulnerable, um, all of the wastewater infrastructure in the town and assessed how much of it was vulnerable to the 100 year flood. And it was found that a little over half of the 42 pump stations in Wareham are susceptible to the flood. And the document also allowed um, a prioritization of the different projects. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, a prioritization of the different projects so that the town would have an order that they could tackle the projects in. So in 2017, the town was awarded additional funding by CCM to develop permit level plans for the three highest priority pump stations. And in 2018, they were awarded grant funding to finalize those designs and produce bid ready specifications and drawings for the three pump stations. And also to complete the permitting that would be required for construction. So this is a graphic that shows the three pump stations um, the blue and the purple in this graphic are the extent of the 100-year flood zone. 
and the difference between the two is the extent of the wave height that's anticipated. So the, the purple is a higher wave height that's anticipated for those zones. This is a, a flood map of where Cohasset Narrows is. It's one of the three stations in the study. Um, Cohasset Narrows was built in the 1980s, and the map on the left shows the, the current FEMA map at the time. And it shows that the 100-year flood elevation was projected to be about 15 feet. So this is what the station was designed to. In the 1980s, there were no design standards for minimum freeboard. So a lot of the critical equipment at the station is either at 15 feet or just slightly above it. The map on the right is the updated map from 2000, um, 2012. And what it shows is that the flood elevations have changed and they vary in this zone between 16 and 21 and 22 feet. So that's all different wave heights that are anticipated in this region. So the water is anticipated to be a level that the stations weren't designed to handle. <coughs> the three stations that were chosen for the project were chosen because they all serve critical infrastructure. Um, the graphic on the <coughs> left is Narrows Pump Station. And there's 17 pump stations that feed into this one station, as well as Toby <coughs> Hospital and the fire station. So if you lose functionality of the Narrows, you also lose functionality of all of the infrastructure that it serves. The Cohasset Narrows pump station serves critical infrastructure in Bourne through an intermunicipal agreement. And the Heinz Field serves uh, the fire department in Onset. So the goal of the project was to retrofit the existing pump stations to meet <coughs> what they would have had to been designed to if they had been built today with an allocation for sea level rise. So the design flood elevation of each station includes the 100 year flood elevation, the newest one that's available, plus an allocation for sea level rise, plus the minimum freeboard that's, um, that's recommended either in the building codes or in design guidelines in TR 16. Um, so as I had stated, if these buildings were built today, this is what they would have been designed for. This is a rendering of the Narrows pump station. All three of them are dry pit, wet pit stations. So on the left, you have your wet well. And on the right, you have a three-story building with your pumps at the very bottom floor and the motors on the floor above and the majority of your electrical equipment on the first floor. The graphic in the lower left-hand corner is a rendering of what the design flood elevation would look like. None of the, the openings in the stations are watertight. The doors, the windows, and the generator room has two large louvers that are used for ventilation when that generator is running. So it's anticipated water would get in through all these different avenues and you would have substantial equipment damage and electrical damage. And this is um, a rendering of the three stations in the project. So I'm gonna talk about the different uh, mitigation measures that have been designed into the project to protect from this. At the beginning of the project, there's two different methods that you could use to flood proof a pump station. One is to make it watertight and not let any of the water in. The other one is to engineer an opening so that the water can come into the station and replace all the equipment in the station so that it can be submerged. Um, a cost effective analysis showed that dry flood proofing or making the stations watertight was the more cost effective option. So the first thing you would do would be to replace the existing doors with flood doors. These are the, the two louvers in the generator room. And so there's a concrete chase that's designed to protect them. It's essentially a big concrete box on the outside to not let water in. And the, it's so big because if you had to press it against the louver, you would restrict the flow in the generator room and not allow it to run. So that allows for adequate ventilation. Additionally, there's a flood log system to allow the generator to be removed. So that louver right there is how the operators <coughs> currently remove the generator when they need to replace it and bring in the replacement unit. So that maintains that functionality. Additionally, it's recommended that all entry points beneath the design flood elevation are sealed. So that's what the concrete chases look like. And then there's smaller chases that are designed for the louvers that are just a little bit below the design flood elevation. Additionally, there shouldn't be anybody that's in this building during a flood. 
um, but if they are, they can't open the door because the, the building would flood. So the louver behind the concrete chase opens like a French door and you would be able to get into the concrete chase and climb up the ladder to the roof as, an, as a last resort escape mechanism. Um, there's a waterproof epoxy coating that would go on the outside of the building. And there's a, a, a large load that the buildings weren't designed for with the water load that would be pressing onto the building. Both Narrows and Hindfield are unreinforced masonry walls and structural calculations show with that amount of water pressure on the building, it could potentially collapse. So this is a rendering of the internal structural bracing system. It's a series of vertical and horizontal beams that would go on the inside of the station that would provide the structural support to withstand the hydrostatic load. <coughs> Cohasset Narrows is the, the newer station, so you don't need as intensive a structural system and these are reinforced masonry walls that would be used to provide the, stru uh, the structural reinforcement. Additionally, the newest design guidelines have standards for how much um, diesel fuel should be kept on site so that if your electricity is wiped out, you'd be able to keep operating under generator power for 48 hours under peak load or 96 under average flow. So it's recommended that additional storage capacity is added to both of these stations. And any conduit openings that are below the design flood elevation are an avenue for water to get into the building. So those are all going to be raised above the design flood elevation. And then lastly, um, it's recommended that a bypass connection be installed. So this allows you as a last resort measure, if anything happens to the station, if there's any equipment failure or the station needs to be shut down for any other reason, it'll allow the station to be completely bypassed. So this is um, underground piping <coughs> that's put in and it allows the flow to be bisected as it's coming into this, or intersected, sorry, as it's coming into the station and brought to the force main where a temporary pump would be brought and would pump the flow um, further downstream to the next portion of gravity sewer. And the photo on the right is the bypass installation being put in. So this is something that would typically be done during very low flow in the middle of the night and everything is constructed above ground. And then at the lowest flow, you cut your pipe and you put in the valving for the bypass connection. And this is what the bypass connection would look like in a section view. In Cohasset Narrows, this bypass connection would be made in a driveway. So it would be made in a manhole so that you could continue to use the driveway. Um, for Heinz Field, the, um, the bypass connection would be made in a field. So you would have something more similar to this photo here where it's an above ground connection and it makes it a little bit easier to be able to tie into <coughs> the pump. The permitting, there were two permits that were filed as part of this project. The first was a determination of applicability with the Wareham Conservation Commission and Mass DEP. And for that, we received a negative determination, which means that no order of conditions is needed for the project and there's no further action under the Wetlands Protection Act um, besides constructing the project in accordance with the act, but no additional paperwork that would need to be filed. And the second permit is the Mass DEP WM16. This is a permit that's filed with DEP essentially to let them know what's going on with the infrastructure that's under the NIPTES permits. And you really only hear back if there's something um, that they don't like that you're proposing to do, but that has been filed also. So at the end of the month, we'll be delivering um, drawings and specifications for the projects and then the next the next step would be to apply for funding for construction of the retrofits. This is something that could either be done as one large projects or there are different components that could be broken out. For instance, installation of uh, floodproof doors or doing the waterproof coating. One of the most critical aspects of this is the emergency bypass because that allows you to completely bypass the station. So that's something that's recommended to take priority. So that's an overview of the different mitigation measures and I wanted to open up to questions to see if there were any uh, further detail that was needed. 
of curiosity when you're talking about uh, reinforcing the pump stations yes. for the loads. Uh, would it make sense to just put an envelope around them? The way that the pressure builds up, you need it to fight from the inside. So you wouldn't get the same um, structural right. integrity by putting your bars on the outside of the station. I don't mean on the outside of the station. I mean put an envelope outside of, here's the wall of the station. Mm. Put an envelope here around it. So you would essentially build a wall around right. your pump station. One issue that you, and I'm thinking out loud here, but one issue that you would have is you would have to build it far enough from the louvers that you could get the, the ventilation, and then you do have to be able to take out the generator through the louver. Um, so you would have to have either a flood plank system or another mechanism you to be able do that to get it out. You wouldn't do that the roof down? I'm sorry? You wouldn't do it from the roof down? Do what, generator? Yeah. No. Why? Because they bring it on, they actually they deliver on a flat truck, so they would have to put a crane on the roof for what yeah. you're talking about. Exactly. Uh, they, they bring a crane that they set it on the side of the building, yeah. picks it up, brings it in, and then they shove it in with rollers and the whole nine yards. Okay, um, they're going to use a crane and pick it up. Can't they pick it up a little higher and drop it down? I'm sure they can do anything. I'm sure they make all kinds of equipment. Yeah, I worry about a wall that have to be structurally sound if a boat came into it. You know, these walls in the foot station are pretty good. So in a flood, remember, everything's floating. So if a boat comes down the road or a log comes down the road, that wall is going to have to be quite thick. So the cost of that wall, and then if it does get to the wall, it's going to get the building anyways. So that was an idea thrown out there because we talked about floaties that nobody thinks about. And the idea of building a wall outside was abandoned for reinforcing the, the building so they could take that force. So you think this by reinforcing the existing is going to accomplish the same thing? Absolutely, it's going to accomplish more than if there were just a wall stand alone. And this was decided by structural engineers beyond me, but we bought structural engineers in and they get did all analysis and they can reinforce that building to withstand quite, to withstand quite a bit of force from implosion as well as explosion. Yeah, so I don't know. Go ahead. I don't know, Jimmy. I think if we're not disturbing the footprint at all on the outside, we might. Maybe addition. If we did do that, there might be additional permitting issues. Because you're in the coastal zone. Oh, are we? You're in it. So you might be wiser to deal with the building that you have. Yeah. With the wall, you got to make sure you go deep enough. Permitting. Because you got to foot it, and so you got to support it. So you'd have to go quite deep, then run some bars up and attached to it. So the structure of that wall is going to be pretty significant. Sandy. If I remember during these presentations, one of the questions they were asked, was there enough room on the inside to put these support beams? Because some of them, the material is so close to the wall, there isn't a leeway to put in some beams. If I remember that correctly? Yes, you are. Correct. And more than likely, that was most of it was at Heinz. And we walked Heinz. We went through all the areas in question to determine that we could definitely reinforce it. <coughs> And one of the areas that was very strict was the, uh, the generator room was very critical, and we walked, we were able to get into there. And down in the basement, we've got a, a spiral staircase coming down where the pump, pump room is, where the pumps physically are, with some concern, and we can definitely fit it in there also. So the areas of concern, we, we actually checked out, and it's very doable. And we also modified the, the design of the internal bracing to accommodate to that. Yeah. Spa the space issues, yeah. yes. Yeah, so it's, it was, yeah, good memory. It was, yeah, it was I was there for, what, two or three meetings? Now I know why I went. <laughs> There's a lot, and, and sometimes even I get lost if I miss a meeting. It's, it's just so, <clears throat> a lot goes into it, more than I ever imagined. Because, yeah, I'll just put this in there. This, this is structural design and theory that has to go into it beyond me. So I'm glad that um, the engineers came down and did the work. The last went into it. Yeah. Go right ahead. So basically, do I understand that we're more or less making our existing buildings waterproof? Yes. So now everything is going to come in through the roof? What do you mean? Any equipment? No, we're, we're just talking about a storm. So the louvers that they're going to put in, they can move so I can get the generators in. The door's going to be waterproof, but they're still going to be able to operate the doors coming in and out of the building. 
So what we're talking about in the event of a storm, um, uh, you know, that we're preparing for, then we will tighten the building up and this waterproof proofing of the building becomes critical. But before that, the building is totally functional. We can come in like we were, um, move things in and out. There's provisions for double doors to open to get pumps in to bring downstairs. And the generator itself, by moving the louver, we can actually get the crane in there and bring out the generator. So uh, we'll, we'll just bring the air in from the top? Yes, it goes down, down yeah, so it sucks it down and into the... And that's yes. all going to be waterproofed? Yes. Yes. Now, <clears throat> these flood levels. Yes. I understand we're going to be seeing FEMA next month. And they've changed the flood levels again. So part of that is accommodated through the free board that's required by the building code. Part of that allows for the fact that it's going to be going up and also the, the sea level rise. So there are allocations in the design flood elevation that are above the base flood elevation. So if we go back. To this graphic right here. Your current 100 year flood elevation, which was set in 2012, is down here. And these allocations are meant to accommodate for those of the But we're not doing that. Yes, no, no, we're designing to here. Yeah. Um, so but when, but we're not going up on stilts. We're just waterproofing. Yes, Correct. yes. That building can go on stilts, it's down 28 feet. The building cannot go on stilts. Most of it's down below no. the surface. So we have to just with stilts, we just got to go around it and protect it. How much of that water comes in from the from the parking lot? Say if we were to uh, say we were we were at the narrows, would we be apt to get water rising through the floor? Are you going to waterproof that also? I, I don't believe that's going to happen because you got the ground level and so the concrete's below it. So. Yeah, I can't speak to if the water's going to blow up from the bottom. I don't suspect because it probably would have done it by now. Um, I really don't suspect that. But I have questions going to be from, from the ground elevation up because that water is going to rise above the steps that we have and then up higher into the building. And that's what we're going to waterproof for, protect it against the flooding. And as a part of our analysis, too, we looked at buoyancy, so to make sure the whole station doesn't pop up with the <laughs> high groundwater. Um, and it, it is heavy enough that it'll stay put. Otherwise, you would have to reinforce it. Although, putting anchors we, on all four corners? I'm sorry? Putting anchors on all four corners? That would be one option, yes. Or concrete collar, yeah. There, there are ways to retrofit it to weigh down the station. Or we'll just staff it. Anybody else? No. If you did have a breach, uh, do you have any pumps designed to handle it and dewater the building? We have dewater and pumps. My gosh, we'd have to have something a lot quicker then because if it breached and come in, it would be endless. <coughs> I don't know if I have a pump that could deal with that flow. So we could consider that, but right now we don't. One thing I could do is take a pump that we have that's designed to pump sewer is disconnected out of the system yeah. and put that in there and have a pump straight out the door because, I mean, or at least the highest point wherever that is, um, over the louvers or whatever, to pump the water out because those pumps do about 3,000 gallons per minute. And I would imagine all your pipes through the walls are link sealed anyhow. Mm -hmm. But it, boy, it finds its way. It's amazing. It's amazing. And you know, I, if I, you I, had a, you had a, what I'm saying, guy, you, 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 you probably the possibility is pretty high you'd have some kind of minor leakage. I just wondered if there was a, you're planning a mechanical way to to, to plan for Pumping normal out. average leakage, the stations have pu sump pumps to handle the water, okay. like bilge in a boat, so you can handle it. But I, the rate is what would get me nervous. Um, I'd have to get a pump that's huge to keep up at three to 4,000 gallons per minute, and there's no, no provision for one of those. That kind of but that's yeah. the kind of rate that would come in. So yeah, we, we have regular sump pumps. They probably do about four or 500 gallons a minute. Um, I don't know if that'd be enough. I, I truly don't. I'm talking little... Dike leaks, you know. Yeah, we, we, we could handle those. Absolutely. Any breach I'm, I'm concerned about, I don't know. If but I can you're not going to pump it into our system? Uh, no, it's going to go out, like supposed to, into the water, so it goes then back into the ground. We're certainly not going to put it back into the sewer system because that is illegal. And we certainly wouldn't do something that is unacceptable <laughs> or illegal. But if we are going to use a sump pump, wouldn't that water be contaminated? So the sump pump we're using is internal in the system because it's in the sewer system. So it's not really groundwater we're talking about. 
it's it's sewer water. So, but that with. but that is a risk if we are going to pump o out we, a breached facility, we are going to put greased and stuff like that. It's a potential. Water, dirty water yep, into our water system. It, but by that time, most everything else is flooded in town matter. anyway, so it wasn't going it's to matter much. It's yeah. Not matter. Okay. else anyone? a lot of work do you have anything else to throw at us no that's what I had so if there are no further questions um, so I said before the, the drawings and the specifications will be delivered at the end of the month we're just finalizing okay. those uh, do you have a copy of what you were showing us oh yes so I actually I have copies for anybody that would like one this is the, the same presentation I just gave. All right, okay. Thank you. 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 Sewer bypass connection, you mentioned that's just that short 30 foot or yes. so run. Yeah. So we, we apply for a grant to, we're applying for a grant to fund that. Um, in talking to the town planner, one of the things he mentioned to me as it rose to a high level um, on the meeting we had the other day is if we were going to apply for a grant or should the town apply for a grant. I told him that we were applying for a grant, so I don't think the town's going to apply for a grant. I think they'll apply for a grant for something else. I think Bi the EOC center or something like that, Emergency Command Center. The bypass connections you're talking about here, this is only for three, for three stations? Correct. Correct, for the three stations. Installation of bypass with three stations. That's that $204,000? I'm not so sure what it is, but it's it's reasonable in the big picture. Yeah, I don't have the grant. I apologize. I don't have it in front of me. I'm sorry. I do. Or maybe I do. It's I do. Two hundred four thousand. Yeah. Or maybe I, I do, do have it in front of me. Right here. It's the one that Russ sent in. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I haven't. I, you, I came from uh, that was uh, a here. Four thousand five hundred. Use a grant office and prepare, but the total project was two hundred four thousand. The grant is 153,375. Right. Our match mm -hmm. would be 46,835. Do we have the funds? Yes. Out of what account? Retained earnings. The epoxy being spread on the inside or the outside? I'm sorry? Is the place? epoxy being spread on the inside or the outside? On the outside. So we don't have to remove any equipment or anything to, to do that? No, not to my knowledge. When we look at it, I think it's just whatever we use to put it on, it just goes What's on. it going to look like? They have diff many, many different styles. I talked to some of the guys that do epoxy, and they can pretty much make it look like they want to. Different colors, they can make it look stucco. There's, there's, there's some ways to make it look really neat. Keeping with the, the, we'd probably keep the brick technology, the color of the brick, probably even put lines in it. We'd try to keep the match of what it's existing at. Or if somebody has another idea, we could do that also. Because there's a lot of it, flexibility. Is it cost enough that it won't accept graffiti? No, it's very dead serious. I, I really don't know. I'd have to ask some of the experts that do it. One of the guys we talked to was Warren throughout this whole thing, and he says not a problem. So I have to talk to him further about that. I certainly didn't talk about graffiti, but it's a, it's a consideration. And so that epoxy coating does two things. It makes the station waterproof, and it also prevents the bricks from getting soaked. So if you had water elevations that high and the bricks got soaked, even when the flood water is received, you're just going to have a very, very damp environment inside the station that's going to be corrosive to the equipment. So it minimizes the risk of that. I'm familiar with the parks in walls. Yep. Okay. There was just one other thing there. Um, 
this additional fuel storage. Yes. Where's that going to go? It's currently being proposed as a, a larger belly tank. It's a tank that'll be going. Go, we have an existing belly tank. We probably one of two ways we can put a bigger belly, bigger belly tank, or lift up the the uh, generator, which would be very difficult, or right along the side of it, put another tank. Is it inside? It's going to be inside, absolutely, in the generator room. All right, so. Within the generator room. And we've got room for a bigger one? Yes. Yes. Okay. We looked at both sides, and actually, I, I fitted it to myself, so that means that anybody can get in there. At the time, I, I, I hadn't lost, I hadn't lost 30 pounds, so add 30 pounds when I did it, so I'm thinking that I've pretty much okay. covered most people sliding through. If nobody else has any questions or comments, thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you. Next time, cookies. Heard loud and clear. <laughs> thank you very much. Guy, you're on. Oh, I, you know, I, I apologize. I, I don't have a whole lot for you tonight. I, I don't know if that's going to trouble anybody, but. Um, Did you want to see if these are good? These are good. Uh, before I, I go, I, I, before I move on, Mr. Chairman, yep. if you don't mind, go ahead. Uh, the last part of that, the resiliency, I, I'd like to know if, if we want the installation of the bypass connection. Is that something that we're willing to move forward with for that grant? And if, if you do, then I'd want to get a signature on this saying that we are going to you that the board endorses it and this letter will go to czm um and the same thing with i think you had talked earlier about the spillage the the uh hassle we heard we had earlier the resilience assessment the overflow lagoons we're applying for grant that to investigate if there's anything else we can do and, uh, and as maybe put a bigger tank out back where it's already treated. Do we raise those? Do we have one raised and not the other? Next to it's a big hill. Do they put another whole tank in there? So what do we really do to handle if it was to happen again? So there's some studying. Uh, we had brought CZM down and walked it with them. And our idea was just to put this big wall around it. And they says, well, that's all well and good, but there's other options. And do you want it to be raw sewer if it breaches? Would you rather have it breach if it's treated sewer? Because the treated sewer goes to the river, it's a lot better. So I said, well, I never thought of that. So they said, I would suggest you do some research before you just put a big wall around it. So that's what that grant is, is, is addressing. So that's what we're trying to accomplish with that grant. So what I'm asking the board is to look at these two grants. And if they agree, I'd like them to endorse them. If they don't, then they don't endorse them. But I would, I'm looking for the board's endorsement this evening on those two grants, bypass and the study of the. Uh, these two grants have an FY19 date on them. Does that mean it starts in July? They're, it'll probably start late in July. It may, I'm sorry, it'll probably start late. As in opposed July. to now. No, no. It's, it's an FY19. Right. It's next budget year. Next could, fiscal year. It could start maybe October, well, November. Yes. But next fiscal year. Yes, absolutely. Could you repeat for me again the amount of grant being requested for each of the two grant requests? The grant for the bypass connection, the total cost of the project is 204500 The grant for that project is 153375 The cash match that we would have to make is $46,835. For the second one, for the lagoon, that's a total project cost of 85,000. The grant is in an amount of 63,750. Our cash match would be 21,250. And what is the likelihood that we would receive both grants? I don't know. Probably, I, I don't know if we, we don't know if we're going to receive either one. But the likelihood, I'm thinking that CZM happened to be at the meeting we had with the um, the town put on last week. I think it was, um, and they endorsed. Matter of fact, they endorsed the uh, the bypass. So I'm thinking that has a good leg in. The other one they suggested that we change it 
instead of just building the wall, that we look at other alternatives. Um, so that they probably like that too, but the question becomes bluntly is funding. And so what they try to do is they take their funding and they try to spread it out. So if we put in two, they'll probably pick one of, of our two and say, I'll give you this one and spread out to other communities. Now, if there's not that many grants, then we may get both. So I'm, I'm gonna suggest that we'll definitely get one. Two, I'm not so sure of. But again, if there's not many grant applications, that changes the whole dynamics. Mr. Chair, you had mentioned that the grant for the bypass, our share would come out of retained earnings. What about the 21,000 for the overflow? Also retained earnings? Uh, more than likely, yes. Unless they, unless they come out of operations. Guy? Yes. Would that come out of operations? They come out of operations. Okay. The 21,000? Yes, out of operations. That's not considered capital improvement? That's operations. Operations. I'm, I'm asking, is the project considered capital improvements? No, because, well, uh, the 21,000 would be um, um, consultants, it would be investigations, so that would, I don't believe that would be capital improvements. Okay, so it won't build anything, it's just going to give us a plan. Right. The same thing for the bypass, a plan. Mm, no, the bypass no, is going to be actually installation. Build okay. Build it. Then why isn't that capital? I mean, trying to understand at what point does it become a capital expenditure or an expense out of retained earnings? Well, that's what the, the retained earnings is basically going in there for capital expenditures. Anyhow. Doesn't the town meeting have to approve all capital expenditures? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Should have to go to town meeting in October. Mm -hmm. So we couldn't do anything if we got the grant, we couldn't do anything until we found a way to completely fund the project. If, yeah, yeah, absolutely. If we got the grant, we wouldn't be starting by October anyway. So yes, absolutely. We'd fund it. We could totally fund it at uh, town meeting. Okay, so I would expect that to come under capital plan, the 47,000. Uh, we can do that, yes. That's where you want it, absolutely. I don't think it's what I want. I think it's what we have to do, isn't it, Mr. I'm not Chair? So sure. I'm not sure. Yeah. You do it as a capital item, yeah. Then that is a capital item. Chair, do you want a motion now to it? Uh, could I get a motion on the bypass? And that goes, that's the, for 46,835. And then we'll do the other one separately. Do we, is it worded that we approve the uh, submittance of the grant? Is that how it normally is worded in this department? Uh, is there a set of words that needed to go in the motion? I, I would suggest that the, that the board endorses the grant application. You want the word endorsement? Then I make a motion that the sewer commissioners endorse, endorse the grant for the installation of the sewer bypass connections. I just have a question about that. If it's if I if I may. Yes, go right ahead. We're going to if, if we're going to approve this, which I know we need to. What happens if we don't get the grant? Then it's null and void. Null and void. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. Okay. I'll second that motion. Sh should we add? Uh, uh, should we add to the motion pending grant approval? I think you're as, what we're asking is that you uh, endorse the application. The the approval oh, is okay. approval is there's no okay. no nothing. It, it's a process. If we I get selected, a, or not. I have a motion and a second on that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, it's five zip. <clears throat> now we are looking at the. I make a motion that we endorse the application for the. Overflow Lagoon at the Wareham WPCF. 
And I'll second that. Motion and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, that's those two. And before we leave tonight, we need signatures of everybody. Yep. Is, there, is it in the packet? I have it packet. Yeah. Yeah. And it's in there, okay. And I think we, we I, I, which is your original? Because I think everybody's got a copy of this thing. For, for this came out. No, just got the that, came out of this packet. Pa pa was in that packet. Thank you. Because I have copies, but I think Good. that packet's critical. Excellent. Okay. And I can just take those back. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Now, the, the, the point the point that Sandy brought up is when that becomes capital. If we end up building the wall, would that be the same thing? Yeah, I would put that. So in would that also have to go to town meeting? Uh, unless she takes it out of the capital. Well, this is this is capital this is not to build the wall, but to do an engineering plan for the wall. So there isn't. Yeah, we we agreed to vote for the grant. Yes. Now, if we get the grant. Does that have to go before town meeting be when we to build the wall, if they decide, decide to build the wall? If they build the wall, we'll have different numbers. Yeah. Yes, but, but will that have to go to if town meeting? If it's capital, yes, I would say so, that it's capital, therefore needs to be approved. Yeah, this one does not. This one, this one can come out of operations and take place for $26,000. Because it's not, a, it's not a capital item. You're not building anything. No. The building consensus to build something. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I just, this was a meeting I had with Bader Engineering, engineers from BSC Group, and uh, Mr. O'Brien, Jim O'Brien is from Dakota Partners in the reference to the 40B, and questioned if the sewer department had, had capacity for the 40B project. So these are the notes. Uh, one was presented by Bader, who was there, so that's their meeting, record of the meeting. And the other is from the BSC Group, it's a record of their meeting. So of the same meeting, but two different engineering firms. So you got we have them both. They're pretty consistent. Just others highlighted other certain things than others, but basically the sim they're the same. So I wanted the board to have it. Um, can you summarize? Can I summarize? Sure. Um, Do we have capacity for Woodland Cove? Is now being presented? Absolutely. They're presenting, they're presenting it to be in three to four phases, and each phase is going to be approximately 8,000 gallons. We have first phase on hand without a doubt. So that's capacity at the plant to treat it. The other issue was the capacity of the collection system, which would be the 18-inch pipe, which could handle up to 2 million gallons per day of flow. They'd be well within that and the pump station could handle it also. We checked the floor, and they did it by the actual chamber it comes in, the channel, and the elevation of that channel relative to the, to the wet well and the historical marks on that channel. So there's no, we have no issues or see no issues. However, there's a study. The um, BSC group is going to give us $10,000 to study that the uh, pump stations to make sure there is no impact. They've agreed to pay five dollars um, per gallon of I and I for every gallon they bring in. So that, let's say the first phase, phase is eight thousand gallons times five dollars per gallon. We'll take that money and continue our projects of uh, of chasing I and I. It goes towards some of the projects we're doing to chase and remove I and I. Um, they've also talked about a holding tank. The tank would be equal to a day's flow, which is thirty-five thousand gallons. That holding tank would give us the ability to say that in the event if I had a problem, repair or whatever, that they could hold it and discharge it at night only when there is no flow, when the flow is at its very, le very le uh, least. And that would not impact the system because everything's out of it. And so the collection system wouldn't have any problem. Um, so those are the things that we've, ag we've agreed that we'd pursue. Nothing's been settled. Nothing's been agreed upon. These are all discussed and we'll continue to discuss them. Um, so what BSC group is going to give their opinion of what we talked about, Beta is going to give their opinion what they talked about, we'll sit down again and figure out where everybody wants to go, and just the bottom line is can we handle it is the question. The other stuff we're not getting involved in is just about the sewer system only. Now, does that make any difference because they've changed the phasing of it? 
And you said it you makes a huge told me difference. the other day that the phasing was going to be starting with the motel. It makes a huge difference. Now it's not going to start with the motel. Well, first of all, the hotel is going to come offline. Whether they demo it, I really don't care, but the flow is going to be transferred to the new yet. buildings. They can't do anything with it yet. They brought nothing yet. They own nothing. Right. They own nothing. And they're not so gonna, that's not going to be part of their phase one project. They said it is. Well, as I heard yesterday, it is not. No, they said it is, but none, nonetheless, it will come offline because 1,200 gallons of that flow is what we agreed to. So we'll have to talk about that again. Nonetheless, we could take the flow and the 1,200 gallons, but our discussion was removing that, and Mr. O'Brien said they would remove that. So I'll see what's, what comes out. And that, in our recommendation, it'll be that it be removed per our agreement when we discussed it. That's what I'll say. But the uh, meeting the other night, they reversed their position on See, the that's meeting we had to reverse because originally they were going to start on the other side. That's where they're going to start now. And the meeting they had, they said they move it to our side because one of the things I talked about is that that 1,200 gallon they're is included. They're moving it back. Yeah, yeah. Well, the, so. then the bottom line is the motel will come offline. I don't care. That's okay. It's coming offline. So it can just sit there while they do the other side. It's coming offline. That line's going to be moved to the new part, so there's going to be no sewer line for the motel. So however they do it, that's up to them. I could care less, but we're talking about flow. And they agreed to remove that flow to the other building. So whatever they do with that building, I could care less. But the flow from that building is gone. That's all I care about. Well, it sounds good, but until, I understand, I, I'm just saying it sounds Absolutely, good. Absolutely, you're right. But until there's something in writing that they own that motel and can make that designation and in fact take it offline i don't believe it well they kind of knew the second box they, they own nothing That's so right. their projection of the sex so no matter what they say is their proposal right. because they own nothing so they have if, if you said go tomorrow then they're going to make the acquisitions that's how it's working. They were planning on the choir as they went along because they're working with this tax credit program that they may or may not get because it's a year-to-year -year thing. So everything is day-to-day, year-to-year. So every decision we make is based upon. And what we said to them is that we're talking about phase one, we'll talk about phase two, we'll talk about phase three um, when we get there. And the concept was that they would phase it out. The 34,000 gallons would be broken out, so it wouldn't be ever. We would never see 34,000 gallons at initial build out. Can we send some to Plymouth? I would like to. I, and, and again, as I was saying, I call. I mean, I've been talking to a lot of people, call a lot of people, especially DEP, EPA, and then what I keep hearing is it's you got to wrestle. That's all it is. Courts favor them. Just wrestle and wrestle hard. That's what I'm hearing. So I want to make sure that the sewer is protected, whatever I can do. So I don't care about any other political, I really truly don't. What I care about is they do not blow up the treatment system and they do not blow up those, the, the lines that carries it. That's, and I'm gonna, that's something that I'm gonna really adhere to and that's it. And so when they make a plan, they better well follow it because we need to get in st etched in stone, agreed upon, lawyers or whatever before they get one drop additional because they own 1,200 gallons. They own it. Well, they, I should say it's the potential for because that's what the motel's doing, 1,200 gallons per yeah, day. Right. When they purchase it, they own those gallons. So that's theirs. But other than that, um, they're asking for an increase. And when they get it all rectified and settled, it still has to come to this board to grant the increase. And so we'll deal with it when everything's in stone, in writing. But they can't shut that off until they own it. They can't, yeah, they can't do anything to that till they own it. They own nothing, and that's critical to yeah, understand. I didn't know any the of point. this. The meeting was enlightening to me because I didn't know they didn't own anything. I didn't know that they were willing to face it. I, I was under the assumption that I'm going to get 35,000 gallons tomorrow. Bam. That's it. And that's what I was fearful of. They cannot do that according to their plan. They cannot do it because of funding, because of the tax credit program. This 35,000 gallons per day, that's fully built out. So when all three phases are completed. Now, are all the lines from where it starts for this Woodland Cove project to the pump station, are they sufficient in size and diameter to handle this flow? Absolutely, it's, it's Do any of them need to be replaced to accommodate this flow? Not at all. I, 
in, in the reality, reality, because I, I, exactly. I, that was my feeling. we want her in a big circle. And I said, okay, here's feeling. the reality. That's an 18 inch line. That's an 18 inch line. I think line can take 2 million gallons a day. We're not even near that. So, so we have an 18 inch line coming out of the hotel? 18 inch line going past that hotel. Okay, and so you, you well, tie into that. That's right. The line coming out of the hotel is a six inch. I'm requiring an eight inch. So they'll have to change their line connecting to the, to the sewer. That's something because it's, it's if the more hotel flow. is to be used, if any all of it's to be used, it's all mm -hmm. going to go to eight inch because it's okay. thirty five thousand gallons a day. It's a little better flow, and the tank uh, and I'm still something we're still talking about is what do I do? I concern myself with rags and grease and things like that because it's it's a huge complex and mm -hmm. it's going to bring about all those things. So we're still talking about do we put a commutator in there? What do we do? So those are some that will continue the discussions of how I handle that issue. That's a big issue. Well, there's going to have to be some kind of a stopgap collection in there, it, there is. for that Thank kind you. of stuff. Otherwise, we're going to be. And so I think I'm going to take it all through the through the uh, uh, 25 or 35 thousand gallon tank, and you know baffle it and then drip it. Out, let let the liquids go something on that line. So we'll do because we have they're going to put a tank. So maybe we just take it all through there. Right? And they're going to put the tank. It's all on them. It's their tank. Their their expense. Everything. Nothing to do with us. Now, you said BCS was going to do a study. Well, Did uh, I have the r initials right? You talk to, so fast, I can't write fast enough. BCS. It's in, yes. It's okay. BC, the, the, no, we're going to do the They're study. They're going to fund a study? It. Yes, and we'll, we'll hire our engineers to do the study. Fund a study of the pump station. Uh, the, yes, uh, fund, is fund the study of the pump station to make sure it meets the requirements needed for that extra 35,000 gallons per day. Are there any other studies being contemplated for this project? None. If you have some, let me know. I, I don't need anything else. It's oh, just work out for them, Johnny. They're going to their on-site piping all going to be gravity. Yes. Yes. I, I would like to see grinder pumps because it cuts up the rags, but that's taking well gravity. And I was suggesting that we put grinder pumps big grinder stations, everything, every building flows into a grinder station, grinds up the rags and then sends it out to me. I mean, I'd like that better. Didn't ask for it. Then require it. Because that would make, that would mean that I don't get the rags. Then I just don't get then require it because that's going to be an influx to our system that has to be controlled. Yeah, because and my... it should be get controlled on that end and not on our end. Yeah, because my, that's right, because my concern was the pump well, station. It's all going to go to the pump station. Is, is there a way to... Uh, as far as I'm concerned... Recommend that, that they, they screen the product coming out? And we they are, maintain the screens? We are going to recommend that. Yeah. We want to remove it. We want to remove yeah. them from just the system. Just get right? it out of there because it's going to happen. Do, yeah. How do we happen. charge them? It's going to happen, happen. But Especially in rentals. Yeah, my unit. It's, a, it's, major. it's a major issue. Yeah. 174 yeah. EDUs? Yeah. It's going to be. It's, it's an EDU per dwelling, so they're going to have 174 units. That's 174 units, so 174 EDUs. As long they're as they're maintaining, EDU, however, it's screened on site. The, on the uh, rec house. I think they put a rec house. There'd be an EDU on that rec house. And any other building they have that's functional, that's water run. So it would be one EDU per dwelling. So each apartment is an EDU. So that building has a potential minimum of 170. And then each one of the EDUs. businesses, another one? Yes, depending on the business. They were EDU because they're 10,000 square feet, so it's an EDU for the business. If the business is going to be a restaurant or something, then we have to talk about chairs and all that good stuff, what they generate. So, yeah, absolutely. Those are going to be EDU structures. I think we still need to make sure we have a mitigation. For the rags and grease. For the rags and everything else, whether it be grinder pumps or mm -hmm. whatever is going to be the most efficient way to eliminate the possibility of that stuff getting into our system. Hmm. We, it's a major problem and we also, have now. And also, uh, what can be done about grease in, inflow? Absolutely. That's a million dollars a year. That's all. We can get a raise now. No, but don't won't they also have a connection fee? They own the connection. Coming out of the hotel. No. So it they already exists. That's right. They're going to use that. They, they own it. They own it. They're just increasing the flow to it. So it looks like you're going to ask them for some requirements, grinder pumps. 
grind the pumps or a tank or, or a rack, some way that mediate the rags and grease that comes from the Why not all three? All three buildings. I no, mean, all, all three. three requirements. Grinders, what you call a tank, and the screen. Screen. All three. Would it work? Is it over if I, collecting? Absolutely. If I grind it, then I don't need to collect. There's nothing to collect. So if I, if they put grinder pumps coming out of that buildings, then nothing else is needed because there's no screen. Screen's going to be useless. Screens have bars about this wide. Even if I put a fine screen, then there's not. It's going to because what it does, the grinder pumps, is it macerates it. It's like okay. of the three. Sure. But let me yeah, ask you like, something, guy. If you grind it, does it end up as a? Does it increase our sludge product? No. Because remember, it's still, it it's still biological. Most of it's biological. The biggest bulk is biological. The rags we're getting anyways, by macerating it, does not affect our process. It doesn't affect the pumps downstream. Doesn't, I mean, so there's a lot of mitigation. It doesn't, and when the grease is that's already in life from other places, it doesn't wind up into it. So if I can put grinder pumps in there, each building has a grinder pump, commercial, yeah, it would be, it would be golden. And I, as far as I'm concerned, it has to be required as part of the... Uh, and, and maybe criteria. I tell you, maybe less expensive for them than putting in a thirty-five thousand gallon tank. But if, yeah. if 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 you if you do that, you'll be creating a force main, won't you? Force main to the gravity. So they have to put a manhole where the pipe goes in. They put these pumps. They pump it to the gravity line or gravity in well, on their property. So All right. Property. So it, it'll still come into our line on gravity. So we won't have to worry it back and up back to cohesive right. narrows. Okay. That's right. No gravity. It'll gravity to us. That's a gravity system. We'll maintain the gravity. That's just done by a manhole. And they can put a manhole. The pumps will feed into the manhole. Gravity into the system. So, if I grind it, would be your first priority. Would you also ask there it be, be a tank to hold the, a daily flow if something happens? Yes. That would so it would be grinders and a tank as your priority for the project, and screening being the third. Right. If they couldn't do the grinder tank, then if they say we don't want to do grinder pumps, because they have to maintain them, it's going to be, they may say we yeah. don't maintain them. And then electricity. They put, yeah, they then they'll need generators else. in case there's lost electricity, and the grinders have to continue, so all that happens. So I would strongly recommend that you go after a grinder and a holding tank. Did I, right? At least. Mm. At least. And if there's anything else that's practical to, uh, to require, I would. This, the, the impact is still going to be <coughs> quite heavy on us. It'll be interesting. They might push back. Well, well they might, but, you know. We'll see what happens. Will this max us out? No, it, 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 again, um, staged in, in the phase they're doing it, no. No impact. No impact. The only impact is the product. Now we're talking about the product. <coughs> it's something we fail in all, in all flows. You know, Mrs. Jones out of her house may flow 500 gallons, and my business may flow 100 gallons. 100 gallons just have more of an impact than your 500 gallons. In this case, the flow isn't the issue for me. It's the impact of what I'm getting. Yeah. And that's going to be rags and grease and everything else that can impact my pumps. I'd rather impact them on their, on their property. So we don't, I guess what you're saying is we really don't have any infrastructure improvements to do before they redo that road. Right. That came up a while ago. Right. What condition is the line in the rest of the way to the plant? Is that? It's good shape, a lot, of, a lot of grease, but good shape. It's greased out. I mean, the whole strip is greased out. I got grease coming on my ears. How old is that line from the oh, depot to the plant? Last year, 1998, maybe? Yeah, that's not, that's uh, not, not anywhere too near old, as old as the other one. 1998, ones, yeah. maybe. I may have it wrong by a decade. It's either 89 or 98, but I want to say 98. I believe it's 1998. Mm -hmm. That's still on the warranty. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Tail, the tail light warranty. So you see my tail lights. <laughs> yes, that's your warranty. <laughs> a year and, and things. If they if they break 364 days, you've got a fighter on your hand, even though it didn't make Sidewalk the Sidewalk guarantee. Exactly. <laughs> the check cleared. The warranty's over. Yeah. Okay. So I just wanted you to have that, you know have that. Um, 
And then, again, any suggestions? I'm going to put something together with the engineers. We'll, I'll circulate it so you can see it, what you want to add to it. So when we do the final documentation at the end of the month to present to the ZBA, at least we'll have a consensus of what we want to present. I, think the, present. I, I mean, from the sounds of things, I think you understand that the, I think the board as a whole agrees that. Well, the way this will go, guy, things. right? I'm sorry? Something will go to planning, right? So I'm going to go to ZBA. ZBA has final decision. Um, as I understand it, yep. um, they will say yeah, so nay, or whatever. And you get and to look at that before they. The ZBA it? decision. Do you get to look at it, what they've got planned? What the, the you're talking about Woodland Cove? Yeah. I have a set of plans from Woodland Cove. They gave it to me oh. a while ago. I see. I I I have plans of the buildings, the manholes, the infrastructure, the piping. It's all there. I have mm -hmm. all that. How they're going to do it from the. Um, from the uh, playhouse there or the, or the community center. I have all that, I have all that. So that's being modified as we speak because the I have the original which had no uh, uh, red, um, commercial. It was, all, I think it was 200 and something units. It was more than the 175. That's the original I got. Yeah, because that's what the it original's was. like almost 60,000 gallons per day, the original. The original that's when I wrote right. them and said, don't even, you know, there's a, we need a whole capacity study, 60,000 gallons a day. For me, it one shot choked me, so I said, there's going to be a capacity study. I don't even want to talk about it until we do all that studying. Since then, it's been coming down. Okay. okay. All right. Um, WEFTEC. I go to WEFTEC annually. Um, I do an international judging, and WEFTEC is the largest wastewater show in the world. This year in particular, I, uh, it's in New Orleans, and uh, we're presenting with GHD, um, this very program we're talking about now, the resiliency. So that's going to go on to national stage, international stage, actually. Pretty excited about it, and I just wanted the board to be aware of that. Um, it's usually in 2019 that I'll come and ask the board to endorse my attending for reimbursement, but I want the board to be aware that we're going to be presenting a, uh, this resiliency program, and um, there's a lot of things we're doing here that we're excited about and we do want to share with the world, so uh, we're pretty excited about that. Uh, sump pumps. You asked me last meeting to do a sump pump research, and we've done quite a bit of research. I'm still waiting for some, for some information. I'll get it over to you guys as I get it all, but we've got most of it. And it's, it's all over the place. Uh, everybody I talk to wants a policy. Some towns, the, the polit uh, politicians in the community will not let them develop one. Others have developed amnesty programs. Things like uh, some, uh, I have some communities saying that we have old uh, lines in our system and the streets that they're using for the drainage, uh, like old um, drainage lines. Some people are redoing their, their water system, I'm sorry, the collection system for stormwater, and they, they're tying them into the stormwater. Other communities put them up, make them put it out on the ground. There's just a gamut of things. It's all over the place. But I'm going to crystallize that and bring it to the board for review. Um, some, there's three communities with really good, good sump pump policies. Taunton is one. The city of Taunton was challenged legally and they were successful in the challenge. They, it started when they were, went in, they were literally went into the basement of a law firm and found the sump pump in the business and they had them remove it. The law firm sued them, challenged them in court, and the city won because remember sump pumps, you know, bringing the groundwater to the sanitary system is illegal at all levels, state, federal, and local. So they really didn't have a leg to stand on. The question became is that, does the town have the right to go into the basement? And the courts have said absolutely. So we'll continue to gather, gather all that stuff. I think Chelsea, Chelsea maybe, there's another community that has a terrific program. They've been challenged, they've been fighting it. So um, I'll give you all that information. And we're still gathering, we've still got some, which we're, as we go and don't get what we want, we keep expanding our base uh, throughout the state. So we'll get as much as we can. Uh, we have an intern working on it and she's pounding the phones and uh, working with the DEP to get the communities that are working with it. But, um, we'll have everything for the board to make a decision, some policies, actual policies that you can look at and help you formulate your opinion on how we want to go to remove sump pumps from the system. Every community I talk to, um, and I only talk to a few, uh, Kelly's talking to more, but they talk about how it impacts them. It's a tremendous impact. If they could just remove sump pumps, it'll go a long ways to, uh, to the inflow part of the I&I. &I. Huge numbers, huge numbers. Some communities speak about doing a lot of lining of pipes and don't get anywhere because the sump pumps continue to bring more. They just pump more often. So you're, you're just sending water someplace else, you're getting it back anyway. So you may close this pipe up, but you get it indirectly anyway. So all that's out there, and we'll put this all together. We'll summarize it and get it to the board. 
The idea of just bumping it into your neighbor's yard isn't working. Of course it works. There's communities that actually do that. So some of them talk about, especially in the winter time, there are people that are still pumping in the winter time, so they throw it in the yard, it goes down the road. Uh, there's some concern with snow and ice. Some people make you put it, if you got a catch basin, they make you put it to the catch basin. So there, and there, there's all kinds of ways out there. But the bottom line is it's, it must be removed from the sanitary sewer. That's the <coughs> bottom line, it must be removed. So that's where I am with that. That's all I have for tonight's meeting, I apologize. Today I was at the combines at Gillette Stadium, really good time, it's a combust which was all about procurement and all the different companies that have been approved by the state that have been procured that we can use. Uh, so we met some of those vendors. Uh, I did a course today on contract uh, uh, procurement for construction, um, for you know, sewer construction, and another one on I did construction and engineering, the laws on hiring engineers. The state has also put together a list of engineers that they recommend, both that they vetted. Uh, so that's, uh, yeah, they got, yeah. Both so, of them? Both of them. And so it's pretty extensive, and I think I, I, a few of our engineers I noticed were on that list. So I was, I was, that kind of shocked me. So it was a really good day, a long day, but a good day. A lot of education, met, met a lot of people. And so I apologize, I came, I came from there to here, so I'm not as prepared as I can be. So that's why the report's short. I apologize. I'll make it longer next time. We like short reports. I know. <laughs> but there's some things I want to get into. One of the things is that we, we're making a pamphlet to hand out. We have guests or whatever, the pamphlet's gonna have a mission statement. I've written a mission statement. I want the board to review it, add to it, take away from whatever, and then describes the plant. So it's just another way of the, of the public educational program. We're really working towards the public to educate the public on what we do, who we are. So when we go to the public and say, we need to fix this pipe, and they say, well, what is that pipe? We want them to know what that pipe is. If you go, we just did a program on YouTube, it's on YouTube now, but we did a program with the local TV, and we walked the facility and we talked to people about the facility. We're gonna keep expanding on that. Um, we're gonna talk about the collection, we're gonna talk about sump pumps, we're gonna talk about all the things that, that impact the system. Um, so we're really working, and we're trying to work with the schools. Uh, we work well with Upper Cape, we're trying to get Wareham on board. Our intern just finished up, she just took her test, so I'm waiting for the results. Uh, she was at that meeting we had that Thursday, um, and she did a great job of presenting the student's point of view on resiliency and all the things that they're going to be spending money on. So that was really, 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 it was a great. So the public educational program that we're developing is, is going to go a long ways to educate the public. We want the public knowing exactly what we do, how we do it, what degree of service they can expect from us, what it costs for that service, the whole nine yards. No guessing, and so that program is part of that. So I'll bring that to the next meeting and explain that and bring the pamphlet and the whole nine yards, so thank you. Okay, where do we stand with the EDU schedule report that was talked about? Um, I talked to uh, Mike and, and um, yeah, he's real close. So he said another week or two. He originally said a month, so he said a week or two, so we're close, we're very close, so I'll, I'm still following that. Would it be worthwhile to add on our agenda the EDU schedule, the sump pump, and sump pump as a standard agenda item? I don't see why not, because we're gonna constantly talk about those. It's, sump pump is really something I wanna pursue. I need them out because it really, I've never been more nervous than I was during the March storms. I mean, I just literally could not stop the flow. It blew the plant up. We just spent the last few weeks since end of March trying to cover the field that we put this water on. It's been a tremendous endeavor. Thank goodness we had wood chips coming out of our ears. But I've never seen it. So I don't want to lose this, the, the sump pump concept. I, I, we want, I want them out. I think it's time that we get sump pumps out of our system. They're unacceptable. Yes, so we need to talk under about sewer it. superintendent report, I'd like to add uh, topics. The EDU schedule, sump pump, um, just call it sump pump, and INI, and INI. And those are standard items to be discussed at each meeting. Maybe somebody in the public might see an agenda and might be wanting to come in and listen to discussions on those points. Mr. Chair, all right. Oh, well, that's fine. When you talk to these other communities, Guy, did you find out how they were enforcing it? Um, fines, through money. Fines. So if you don't let them in the basement, but how are they investigating? Are they? They don't. They what they're doing is they send letters out. I've got a copy of the letter. 
to everybody on sewer in areas suspected to be low with, with water table issues that we're going to be coming in, we're going to come and inspect your property. They put out letters. And so they come in, follow up the letter. Then, then Sandy, your idea is get those people in here. Let, if they see it on the agenda, they get the letter, they might very well come in and be willing to talk about it as opposed to under sewer superintendent's report, it doesn't so tell me exactly. So I'm just thinking it might be worthwhile to well, add it as an fine. ongoing discussion point. That's a good idea. Should, should we have an it's idea funny, though how we're going to do it before we have that? I mean, it's know what we're going that, to find and that kind of thing? That's all part of the discussion going on. I mean, to me, we're waiting for Mr. Campina's study to come back to us, but I'd like to see it just doesn't mean we have a solution. I just like to see it on the agenda for nothing new, even if it's nothing new to add. But, but, but we, get, we get his study first. Yes. Okay. I apologize. I thought I bought more, but this is the wet weather impact that we found. It's, it's in our I and I port. We're, we're at draft. So remember that Bader, we, we spent quite a bit of money to do a complete I and I study that was part of our permit. Uh, it, it mandated by the state of Massachusetts Department of Environmental Protection. We had to study every inch of sewer in the town of Warham. I've got uh, manhole inspections. We had to do 300, which is 10%. We have 3,000. We we had to camera about five miles a line, and, and we got we did more than that. I've got video on every camera that's actually on the um, utility cloud, um, and they're they're putting that report together. It was supposed to be done at the end of the year, but the wet weather the state extended. When it came March third storms, the state said no, include that storms because that was severe. And so we've had to upgrade it, but yeah, it's just about done. So I don't know if anybody's got a copy. What are you, got two what are you here. talking? What are you talking? Is that what's this? Wet weather impact study right, summary yeah. of finding and recommendations. Yeah. I don't, I don't have one. Guys. Does anybody else have one? No, I don't, and my computer's two. down, so I can't get one. I have two, so I need. So the report's a lot thicker than this, but this is just one piece of that report. Yeah. Okay. And um, I'll give you the report. I just want to find. Thank I, you. I'll leave it a draft because I think we can still discuss it. Yeah, it's what this once it comes out, yeah, the draft. Once it comes out, then I'll distribute it. But that report's very close to coming out. Can you out. send it electronically to Malcolm and myself since we didn't get a copy? I can send electronic. I can send electronic. Absolutely, absolutely. Please, thank you. I can do that. Can write it down. No. Uh, Guy, tell me. here's another question, Guy. I recently got a report: revenue budget to actual report. Mm -hmm. Does something like this exist for the expense side of our spreadsheets? This is a revenue budget to actual. Is so there an expense budget to actual? Absolutely. Can that be sent out also? So ask, uh, we'll, uh, we'll get it from Judy and send it out. So I think that comes from, from the accounting. So we'll ask accounting to send you. I believe that comes it from It came accounting. from your department. So some, some, someone gave it to her. No, she, she, has, she sends it out to her. us. But I don't, I don't think I got it directly from Judy. We, we get, they come in the mail to us from June. Okay, and therefore your staff sp sends it out. But I'll have to ask Judy to produce it. You look at the revenues. I, mean, I have revenue. I want expenses. expenses. I'll get that. Because all the expenses are tracked at the, at the accountant's office. They track the expenses, and then they put it against the, the actual, and then we get quarterly statements. Okay, this is where you are in your budget. Yes, because we see the biweekly payments come to us, but there's no hint as to where we stand against budget in all these categories. So I'd love to see an expense component. Stay in that for a long time. Well, I'm s well it's there. The expenses are there. Well, we would like, I would like it. I get a report every morning on my, every Monday morning on my desk where I have expenses compared to, I have to know because I'm spending the money. Mm -hmm. So I, you want a copy of my report, I can do that. I get one from in-house. We keep it in-house. We keep a record of what we're spending against what our budget is in-house. Every Monday morning, I get a report on what we're spending so I know where I am, what percent of my budget is expended, what percent I have left to the rest of the year. As I make decisions, I look at this sheet and say, okay, well, gee, I like to do that, but this is a little short, whatever, or stop moving money around. So, I, 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 so I this looks a, like... We get a copy of that for the meetings. Yes. So you have an idea what the hell's going on. Just to keep us. Keep but this us report of what you're appears doing. to be um, July 1st through March 31st. I'm looking for the same time period expenses, so I can see it retroactively for the full full year. Thank you. Peter. 
You can get it detailed also, which you really, you can get it detailed, but it's just going to- you Don't know yet until you show me this summary, then well, I, so I might ask another question. Yeah, there's detail of every, every penny well, spent. That, which is quite extensive. That comes from the accountant's office? That comes from the accountant. I go online through VADAR. Everything comes through VADAR. So I go to VADAR and I pull out this huge report and spits it all out and you can read it. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. I'd love to see something in our package every month on a month, you know, so we know where we're all at. I mean. Just a P&L, basically. Well. No, you, you, yeah. and you know, it, it expressly no, you month know. by month you, you know. get the, you'll have a variation, the variation with an explanation Personally, why. Even I understand. Okay. That's all. So we can know, so you don't have to go back through a whole year and find out, well, why are we out of budget? You can just look at the monthly and say, hey, th this cropped up, we didn't expect it, and you know. Well, we've been fortunate. We haven't overspent our budget yet in many years, but we've been very fortunate. But. Sometimes it's kind of hairy, but yeah, definitely we'll share that. That's easy. That's easy. We have it. We have it. Yeah. Anything else, anybody? Guy? No, I, I, I think I've, at this stage, I have everything that I wanted to say. Just, yeah, absolutely. I Any sent you all to report email. Yeah. We pumped uh, Parkwood <coughs> Pump Station. The, the force manual from Parkwood to Oak Street, the air relief valve is gone. We removed okay, it last our, night. Our next meeting is going to be next Thursday, 17th, with Water Warriors. Oh, okay. And that's basically the only thing that's on the agenda. Here. Here. Where, yes, it'll be here. I will miss, I will be late for that meeting. I, it's in conflict with mine at Forest. Okay, well, we moved mine at Forest to the 17th for this month only, so yeah. we're now up. Yeah, I will be late. We'll drag our feet. Yes, we're talking about those footballs, right? Yep, that's it. You got it. All right. Do I have Donna? No, I, uh, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And it is 8. 752. 752 to close for the minutes.